Let's do a test run. Test run. Test run. Devil Rick. Tiny Rick. Okay. Tired. I am Me so too. fucking tired. Okay. So, welcome to the Granny Joe Show, Michelle. Welcome back. Yes, hello. It is me, Michelle. Um, <laughs> yes. It is I. It is I. Um, all right, we're talking about Life is Strange, Before the Storm, long overdue review. I said I was going to post it Monday. Kept forgetting about it. Then I got violent. More sick. like Heather. I mean, Michelle got forgot about it constantly. No, I completely forgot about it. She kept it. Pre- asking me to do it. I was like, sure. Yeah, and then I got Two violently ill. Two hours later. <laughs> right. Then I got violently ill, and then uh, could not could not post it uh, Wednesday because I was sick. And then, uh, so now we're doing it today. Hopefully, it's gonna be up today. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Get homework. I have to get homework done, but I I already did the video for it, so it shouldn't be hard to write that down. Um, let's get to the chase. Yeah, let's get to the chase. Heather's been looking forward to this for a while now with her friend Jesse. Oh, how do you before the storm? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yes. I thought you what meant you looking forward about? to this review. I was like, I guess. No. Um, no. I mean, yeah, sure. Anyway, how do you feel now that you're, you've played it? I actually liked it a lot, weirdly enough. I had very low expectations because um, the, they had new voice actors and the dialogue was already fucking awful for the first one. That I was like with new with these horrible voice actors, there's no way they're gonna pull off the story just because you can't. It's just the voice. Some of the voice acting is fucking awful. But then I kind of got used to some of the voice acting. Like, some of the voice acting though, like was who really is that one guy bad. in the bar? Hope you miss twenty bucks, baby. You spilled my beer, bitch. No, no, no. Her David. David was yes. the worst. Easily the Her worst. Her stepdad is the worst um, voice actor. I don't know what they were thinking. Oh my god, it sounded like he was voice acting into a toilet. Like, it just sounded it, terrible. It doesn't sound human. Men always take forever to get ready. We're hoping you men will leave without us. No, Mom. I swear he beat himself to death with a tire iron. Repeatedly. They just sound like they just got some guy off the street and told him to voice act. He doesn't even sound like that to me. It's garage. like somebody who intentionally sounds like somebody who is in a PS2 game. Yeah, and then they the like, go quality. voice act in your garage and then send us the, um... And just say the lines. Don't just say act the lines. That. It's just Fucking crazy. Terrible. Like, the previous actor wasn't bad. He wasn't that... Yeah, he wasn't that bad. He was fine. Replace all the voice actors. Like, did they run out of money? Like, some of the voice actor. Well, like, you could really hear it in contrast with, um... What the hell is her name? Uh, Chloe's mom, Joy? Is that her name, Joy? Yeah, I think so. Uh, like, her voice acting was actually, it sounded almost identical to the original. I don't, is that's not the original? I think it might be, but it sounds, sounds exactly identical. Like if, it, if it isn't the original voice actress, she is identical. And, like, her in contrast with Chloe's voice actor is, like, night and day. The Chloe, I, Chloe, Chloe I got used to. Chloe did, didn't bother me. Chloe I got used to. I thought it would, it doesn't. It bothers me because I really like the original Chloe. Yeah, me, me too, but I know she was going to be replaced. But she... So it didn't But I got so used much. to her. Um, Rachel, like, the problem with... The only problem with Rachel is... Um, my, my only issue with Rachel's voice act. She wasn't that bad. It was just like, okay, so later on, I guess this is going to be a spoiler review, kind of, sort of, but not really. Later on... Uh, there's this scene where, well, I guess not a spoiler because you see it in the 10 minute preview, but, uh, like she gets really mad at Chloe, but because the voice acting isn't completely, like, spot on, it's not 100% clear why Rachel's mad at Chloe. Yeah, I was so confused on why she was angry with Chloe And it's for the kind of scene. intentional, it's kind of intentional because you're not really supposed to know, but, like, if it's a really good voice actress and she delivers a line, you'll get the sense of like if like if it was a really good voice actress, I have a feeling a professional, real world professional one, that you would have gotten the feeling after she voice acted it that like hey, Rachel seems explosive, but something's going on. But with the way that she did it, it just felt very like how dare you how could get you away do from this me? To me? Oh my God, Chloe, we were supposed to go get drunk. Why aren't we getting drunk right now? And Chloe's like, what the fuck? And she's like, oh my god, Chloe, I hate you. Give me some space. And it's like, not really quite, like, 
nailing it. So it's like not quite Yeah, like there. Chloe's voice actor, she would be explo like not the voice actor, but Chloe would be kind of explosive during the first game, but she, it was you, portrayed in a way yeah. where you like understood that she was somebody who was very couldn't handle her emotions very well. But you got the undertones of it, so you kind of understood when she was angry, like when she was really angry that Max was on the phone with Katie. Like, remember when Katie called? I don't know. Chloe was, don't, don't ask Chloe me was getting all jealous and being like, Why are you on the phone with Katie? Don't you love me? And, uh, it, it, you know, and the way she delivered a line kind of came off like, She's a teenager. She's overreacting and is jealous and stuff like that. But she's a teenager and you get all that. You get those undertones. But with this, it's just very, it really is like, Oh my God. Chloe, how could you? I hate you, my dad. Ah, wham. And it didn't quite deliver it. But I, outside of those like little hookups, I didn't think it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought the writing was way better than the original, actually. Uh, I just hated the first scene. There's the, the first scene when um, they go to they go to this bar, bar concert thing. thing. And that, I really hated that I like that the scene. writing a lot. I don't like the premise as much. I, I like, I think the premise is going to go somewhere interesting. Oh, no, I hope so. But I like the super, supernatural aspects to the original game. I'm sure there's there will, more, be, there sure will, there will be. There will be. Uh, I'm going to go into theories at the end of the thing because I have my own theories of what's going to happen. Uh, but there is supernatural stuff that's going to be going on. Uh, yeah, but in good storytelling, you always introduce some vague aspect of supernatural. Well, I'll explain that at the end what okay, supernatural fine. thing is. But, um, because I have a very good theory of what the supernatural thing is. There's already theories going around. I think she can read is. minds or something. Huh? I think well, she I can, think she, she can I do travel. think she, no, no, I think she's watching people. Like, so you see ra the raven on buildings watching people. There's like this raven that shows up and then it sits on the buildings and watches people. I think that's what she's doing. I think she'd either read minds or she could just like, Figure out what people are doing. Like she can watch. There's them. something that she can do because she has this ability in the game to sort of interpret how people are really well. Like she talks about what. Well, being she very also observant. knows what they're doing. Like she's like, oh, you had this thing in your. Like at one point, she's like, Chloe, you have this thing in your locker, and um, it, you know, and I know all this stuff about you. So she's like, it feels like she her power is to watch people. Or to, like, she could read minds. There's or something she... very observant that she can do. Those guys so Rachel has the, I think Rachel has the supernatural ability, and then she gives, like, a different supernatural ability to Max when she dies. I think that's what happens. What I'm, get, what I'm oh, getting. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so Is that's it like what... she's trying to save Chloe from the death, her death from the first game? So she mm -hmm. becomes this butterfly thing to, like... No, no, no. I, uh, I think Jess... Okay, so my friend Jess was talking to me about her theories, and they said that... Okay, that Chloe was actually the butterfly. Remember the blue butterfly? And that's Chloe? How that's that Chloe. Be Chloe. Like, she came from the future to kind of, like, give... Like, to kind of let me, like... Max, I'm gonna die! Yeah, and, and gives her all these powers, and they both, like, Rachel and Chloe give her all the powers, and... Then Max is able to uncover who killed Rachel and Chloe, and then they are able to get like revenge at the end. So I think that's what Wait, happened. Wait, how? I think it could be Rachel that does that, though. It could be the butterfly, but I think the because the butterfly is blue and Chloe's hair is blue, it's like they're color coded together, and then the deer and Rachel are color coded together. So you think Rachel is the deer? Yes, I think Rachel's the deer, and I think Chloe is the butterfly. They're just spirits okay, of those To be clear, there's a deer in the first game. Yeah, there's I a deer. I honestly don't remember too much about it. In the first one, there's a um, deer, and that's probably Rachel, represents Rachel, and then the butterfly represents Chloe, because this is all from Indian stuff, and, like, different things represent different things, and, like, each animal. You have a spirit animal, so I think Rachel's spirit animal is the deer, and then I think the Chloe's spirit animal is the butterfly. We don't know what Rachel's is. So you think we don't know who's that Max's Rachel's is. spirit guided Max into finding the person who killed. Yes, that's what I think. Her and yeah, so she it? can get kind of revenge or to destroy the entire thing because that was Chloe's original wish. Because if you remember, Chloe's original wish was to destroy Arcadia Bay because she hated it so much. So either it's to get revenge or to destroy the, the town, essentially. 
For well, her what, if Rachel, what if uh, Rachel and her both wanted to destroy it? That's what I was thinking. They work together, maybe. But, um... Which gives the, um... Which gets goes to my theory about this current game. We'll see if I'm right on it or not. But who, then that, who's then the raven? I think the raven... Because the raven is black, it has to associate someone who's wearing all black. I think it represents the dad. I think something's going to happen to the dad. I think that, the, that the it dad. foreshadows. Yeah, because the dad, her dad has a black hair and a black suit. I think that that raven represents something happening to him. He's going to die. I something. don't even remember the raven. <laughs> There's a raven that sit, that's like randomly like sitting on like buildings and it's watching... Like, you know, it's watching the guys talk, and so it's kind of clearly, like, the racial and the and that raven's connected, because, like, it's watching, because she was watching at the concert, and then it was watching at, like, some other points in time, so I think that the raven and Rachel connected, I am on but game. I think that, then we'll see if I'm right, I think something supernatural is going to happen to that dad, which is why at the end, the, the mom, not the bomb, I'm sorry, uh, the woman that he's having an affair with, she, like, smiles with a cigarette. She has, like, blonde hair. I think she has something to do with it, and I think something's gonna happen to that dad. Like, something supernatural, and then they're gonna have to resolve it, like, together, what happened to the dad. That's what I think. Or something's gonna happen to that mistress, and I got to figure out what happened to the mistress. But if it's like Twin Peaks, which is I just... honestly don't remember too much about this. Well, <laughs> I, I rewatch. Yeah, I, I've watched so many walkthroughs of Life is Strange. But the funny thing is, no, I, need to I don't even. The, the, I, the original Life is Strange, I didn't even like that much. I don't know if people are gonna hate me for saying this. Uh, I actually did not like the Life is Strange first one all that much. I just remembered. I just love all the theories because I think they're all bull honky. Uh, because I think that the writing is so. Pretentious. Pre I do think it's pretentious and so basic that uh, they probably didn't think of like a lot of the stuff. However, I like looking up the theories anyway. And I and I actually like this thing. before it's so significantly more. I actually really like this this series. I didn't even really like. And as wishes, but it's weird because Life is Strange is kind of one of those scenes where I, I I liked it, but I didn't love it. But I kept I was obsessed with it. Everybody has that one thing that they're not like they don't truly love, but they're just like really into it for some reason. I think I just love the art direction of Life is Strange. I think it's fucking fantastic. And, and some of the characters that I just and then love. I like a lot of the characters, and I like that it's an all woman cast. There's certain things that I really love about it, which I think was why I was drawn to it. But I just think that the fact that it was all written by white Frenchmen who were in their late 30s affected the game a lot. I think if it was done by a woman, it would have been a way better game. Like, way better. And so that's kind of, I think, my beef with it, is that if it was done by a woman, it would have been a better, much better game. Um, but the Before the Storm, I actually think remedied a lot of it, but even though it's still a thing done by white dudes. Uh, a bunch of white adults. But, uh, I, I still like it has much to do with me. I just didn't like that first scene, because the first scene was so... I mean, the only so... problem with them being... You keep mentioning them being white creators. The problem with that... Not that there's any problem with her saying that. It's that there are no... There are mostly white characters in the series. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, and there they're is. all, like, very pale and have brown hair. Almost all of them. Mm-hmm. It's like, I yeah, actually I mix them up sometimes. I Because they all have the exact same hair color. They, and if yeah. the, the, there's one black guy that came up who was, like, sort of the bully antagonist character. So racist, Which yeah. is, like, pretty racist to me. And... Like, in the first game, there was, like, Asian characters and There was things. no, but there was some There were side characters. characters, but there was nothing in this one. And it's pretty, this pretty fucking white game, I have to say. And that's one thing I don't, don't love about it, is that... that's It's like a white person's me. fantasy. But it's, to me. It's a white person's, like, poet, poetic, pretentious thing. Which, so, I, I kind of don't... And yeah, then, like, the, kind of, all, the other black character was the nerdy kid, so it's, like, archetypes. It was just these weird archetypes. These, like, side characters, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, Completely agree with you on that one. Which is 100%. just infuriating to me. I really hate that. I completely agree with you. Uh, that is one thing about me about the original, still annoys me about the current one. Uh... I, yep. I mean, and one thing that really annoys me, like I hate it. It's like the same kind of white, too. It's this, like, pale, fair-skinned... 
exact skin tone that everybody seems to share. Nobody is tanned at all. No one's tan. No, no one has a variety of skin tones, even if they are white. I completely agree with you. And one thing that annoys me a lot, a lot is um, the native when they use Native American storytelling. I got his pet peeve with white dudes that they like to do Native American storytelling, but don't hire any Native Americans. <laughs> And, and don't have any Native, Native American Americans characters. Okay. Yeah. And I, I hate that. Like, what I liked about... It's super annoying. I, it really annoys me. So they have, like, a lot of imagery from other cultures, but they but don't, they don't have any But they don't hire anybody there. that's Native American, and they don't... And it's really annoying to me. And what they do, like, I'm watching the new Twin Peaks, which I love. Really fan... If you haven't watched the new Twin Peaks, I highly recommend it. I loved it a lot. Uh, one thing that doesn't, even though that is a, another very white cast, which I don't like, but one thing I do like about Twin Peaks is that at least they have one Native American character uh, that is a Native American actor, that, and then they have most of the Indian storytelling with him versus having it with the white people. That is one thing I like about Twin Peaks is that he, in the original, he's kind of like this corny character, but I think it works because it's such a corny show that him being this corny, almost like a stereotype, was it, it kind of fine in the original because it was so corny. The whole thing was so campy, but uh, it's a little bit like strange in season three because season three is so serious. But it and he should he needs more scenes. I think he, that character needs more scenes because I like him a lot. But uh, I like that about Twin Peaks, and I almost feel like. If they, really, if they really want to go Native American, then maybe just go full Native American to have a Native American main character. doesn't have to be a campy stereotype like Twin Peaks. Yeah, like, not a, not a But, like, just have her be Native American. Make her a part of the Indian culture. Maybe, you know, have it to where, you know, have that part of the narrative and then hire a Na Native American writer. Would have made a, that situation better and more interesting to me than, than uh, why people always want to make their horror stories with like Indian stuff. <clears throat> Always the white people want to do that. And to make their stuff more edgy, but then they don't they don't actually promote like a lot of And then just doesn't seem to be any Indian sort of cultural things. context to it. It's like you throw a deer in there and suddenly it's Indian. Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, it's like there's no actual, it's such a vague understanding of the culture. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's cultural appropriation. It's a vague understanding of the culture. I don't know if it's cultural appropriation, as it just sort of misses the mark a little bit. Well, no, uh, I guess the reason why I'm saying it's like cultural appropriation is kind of like that. That, that someone said cultural appropriation is kind of like when Jack goes to Christmas Town, thinks Christmas Town is really cool, and tries to bring Christmas Town to Halloween Town, completely fucking ruins it. That's in that sense, point. it's a very culture appropriation because it's like the white people write about Indian culture. It's like that's really cool, and then they try to put it in their like white teenage video game, and it just doesn't work. Um, this is where I think of it. But at least, I mean, yeah, that's that's my main beef with the whole Indian culture. But and that's with multiple games. Like I, I can't get to Fallout Two. I think it's Two. New Vegas is DLC. And New Vegas is DLC. Yeah, I hated that out. DLC. That is the, was the worst DLC. God, I hated that DLC a lot. Um, because, and they have to betray them like savages. Yeah, I just ugh. mythical beings. <laughs> yeah, especially when they make them mythical beings, or Lord they, or they the sexualize them, or they sexualize them. We're moving from the um, topic of. Oh, we are moving away. Let's go back to before, before the, storm. the storm. Okay, okay, okay. So, I didn't not like the first scene, because I thought the first scene with the concept was crazy cliche. How long cliche. is this video going to be? It's eight, we're at 18 minutes. We're fine. Okay. Right. Be, it's, it, we're, we're, we're going back to topic. We're at 18 minutes. So, um, I did not like the first scene. I thought that first scene was very cliche. Uh, and it felt like they were just like, what do teenage girls do? What's edgy and cool? Let's victimize her at this concert because that's what teen teens do. But we'll make it not sexist by having a woman save her. Even though they're still being victimized. Yeah, it's supposed to be some sort of like adventurous moment. They encounter some bad boys and whatever. It's a it's but like a nineties cliche. cliche, man. And having him almost hit her and stuff that's very victimizing. Um it's just so ugh. But after that, there I liked it a lot more after that because it's a lot more intimate moments where, like, I was really I think my favorite scene was the scene where they were on the train. Yeah, like, that's what just, I'm thinking of with the music 
and going, they were just like, yeah, I love that. Sitting together. Yeah. Not a lot of, there's not a lot of like stories or whatever that have those sort of moments anymore. I always feel like something constantly has to be happening or it will bore the audience or whatever. Yeah. So it's nice to have these moments in games where they can just sit down on the train and listen to music together or whatever, ask questions or just talk. I'm yeah. a fan of those kind of things. So that was probably my favorite scene was just them sitting together. I thought that the like the shout moment, like that's your interaction in the game, was kind of silly to me. Oh, where you, where you just have to like find the good people. good come come back. I, I thought that was silly. silly. Yeah, I did think that was silly too. I'd rather it just be like choice making, like it having to be something was dumb. Dumb. It was just dumb. I thought it was kind of silly. It was kind of fun after you got used to it. Because you're like, okay, what do I have to say? But then it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to like um, argue with someone in a video game and try to win the argument when all they give is like a fraction. Yeah, of they the just sins. give a fraction. Of, you have no idea what the whole. So you're like, be. I don't know. So you're like, how when I, whenever I have an argument, I usually articulate the entire argument like while it's happening. Yeah, it's never just like diss him. Well, you know, they would have like a fraction. Fuck I'm like, you, or you know, it's like yeah, and I'd be like, that sounds good, and I would and then click she it. Says, and I was like, that's a horrible comeback. Uh, and I was like, why did you say it like that? Shit, that's uh, not how I was thinking it would. Yeah, go. and it, yeah, it's like I don't. It's like well, in my head, that was a good comeback, and then she says it, but she'll stutter it, and then you're like, oh, okay, thanks, Chloe. You, you're the one who screwed it up, not me. I mean, you're the one who said it wrong. Um. So I like to see I I the park scene when they're at the park was weird just because of the voice acting. Like I don't remember any of that. I might have been a little distracted weird. while there was Yeah, playing. you were playing video games. Well, I was <laughs> playing video games. Yeah, and I don't remember much. I just know they were yelling a whole lot just, about something and I didn't get it. I didn't really like that part. Cuz just just because of the voice acting, it just didn't quite deliver it. It was just like she, I just know that Rachel was angry about something, and I was like, what is something. happening? And, and then the scene where um, she was, like, Chloe was destroying things in the garbage area, that was fine, I guess. I like the way but that again, they, the voice I think that the way point. that they sort of, um, I know we keep mentioning the voice acting, I think they've gotten the point that we don't care for the voice acting. But I'm um, saying that was the main thing, problem with a lot of the scenes. I know, I know. Um... Uh, there is a, there was something that I did particularly particularly like is when um, they kind of do feel like teenagers to an extent like they're extremely dramatic yeah they're very over over emotional about everything yeah and like they think they feel like they have this moment together and it's like everything mm-hmm. she's like I'm into you and then she starts crushing things like like it's a big deal but when you're an adult you're like uh, whatever and then you move <laughs> on you know yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like that didn't work out, but they they feel like the whole world is like falling apart because of these dilemmas. Like they're the only ones in the center of the universe. Yeah, and like there's nothing outside of them. Yeah, and I like that the show. I mean, the game kind of portrays this like very petty nature of kids, or at least how how we feel. Yeah, when you're growing up, and you're trying to like figure yourself out, and like weed is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, like, like the oh, you're so thing. different because you take drugs. And it's like everyone's taking drugs. Like, you're drugs. not weird because you're taking drugs. Or, like, they think they're so cool because they've had sex for the first time. You and, like, the rest of the fucking planet. Like, I, I had sex with Jimmy the other day. It's <laughs> so cool. I know. I'm you're like, oh, who cares? And then you get older, you're like, all right. Yeah, sex with Jimmy, sweet. Good for you. Like, and then people get weed, you're like, nice. And Chloe's like, weed is great. Like, to oh her mom, God, and so the mom's like, weed. okay. I, I, it's funny how the mom is like, because I feel like I'd be like that as a mom, like, that's cool, Chloe. Just get home on time, please. I do like the way they wrote Joy and David because I feel like that's actually like how parents yeah, are. Rather accurate. It's not this it's like. pretty accurate. They're not completely demonized other than david a little bit um he is he's kind of demonized but because i kind of hate when there's like a narrative from the parents and the narrative from the parents that kids are spoiled brats and i hate the narrative from kids that their parents are like horrible like stuck up bitches like i like it when they kind of give them 
a roundedness, like they're actual people. Well, you um, well, you see that Joy is wrong, and so you see that David is wrong, but you see how they got to that point. So it doesn't make them right, but, but you see But it makes them human. They, like, they're they in their the own, they have their own issues. Yeah. Like, the way that her mother dealt with her husband's death is that she married this new guy because she didn't want to be alone. Like, that's how she deals with things. But it's not like Chloe gets just away with nothing wrong, you know? It's like... And then they, they do all the wrong things for raising a child. Like, when your child's going through stuff like this, you don't do what David does. That's, like, the worst thing you could possibly do. Especially since what Rachel said is correct. Chloe is a human being. You have to treat her like a human being. And I, I kind of relate like to Chloe. It's not his Because we were treated very similar to Chloe. And we still get treated like Chloe by our family. We do. We do. We I really knew we were going to bring this in. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm just saying bit. I relate. Some, I, like, I, like, some, this I know you don't like it, but I like being real on the channel. I know, I know. I mean, like, I, I don't mind being real. I just... Um... But that's like there's a, there is something that can be very relatable about. Damn. So I'm saying it's relatable because like a lot of kids go through that where it's like the when parents get abusive for whatever reason, they will pick a they will pick a person out of the family, and then they will a kid most likely, and they will say that they're the actual problem. Like everything else is fine, they're the problem. David's not the problem. Joy's not the problem. Chloe's the problem. That's like how families work. I think that's how David feels. But for, to me, it looks like Joy has so much going on in her life that she doesn't know how to communicate to Chloe, and that things are just such a mess that she doesn't. Well, know she'll how to do with well it. she'll do the whole dismissive thing where she goes, "Oh, she's just a rowdy teenager," and kind of like so a lot of the brawling goes on to Chloe, even though Chloe is a confused teenager with um, a lot of problems, you know. So I relate with Chloe a lot because I know how what she's going through. Even though, because Chloe isn't even that bad of a kid. Like, she skips school and stuff, but she's really not that bad. She's not that bad. I know. I, know, I, I think that Chloe feels like she has a lot on her plate. I mean, uh, Joy feels like she has a lot on her plate and doesn't want to deal with Chloe. Yeah, and she just doesn't want like an extra. She doesn't thing, want. Yeah. She just wants her to she, do she's it. She's like, she doesn't want to come so she home doesn't have to. Thing. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So she, she, then she vents at Look, Chloe. She's, like, because, making money at a diner, you know, like... Yeah, and then she comes home and she, like, just kind to of... To me, like, Joy's... Who Joy is Chloe's. and how she acts towards Chloe makes sense. It has context. It, I can imagine me being at a position or somebody being Yeah, I think Joy is very... Joey? Joe. Joy is very well written. Yeah, like, I can see her. I can see her life. I can see her backstory. And I can get who yeah. she is. And I see how she's the way she is. And then I could see that she cares about Chloe, but just doesn't know how to approach it or how to go about it. And that she has too much going on. Like, she lost her husband. She's working at a yeah. diner. She's trying to support her kid through school. Chloe's going through something. You know, she's probably a little bit more she just doesn't want closed in some areas like therapy. And not like Chloe would want to go to therapy. And, you know. Um, and then she has David, who's kind of a prick, but she doesn't want to be alone. And something about... David she likes, but, you know, it's, like, it's very complex, and I feel like there's a lot of complexity in families. It doesn't just write it off like the mother's a bitch, or that Chloe's yeah. just a bitch, because we are Chloe. So it's, she's obviously just not a bitch, because you are her, and you've been walking through her shoes. Yeah, yeah. It, like, it does it a little bit more crafty than... And I kind of really liked how well written it is. I also think the voice actor sell, just sells Joy's character. And then she looks, sells she doesn't look like a wholesome mom, which almost every mom in every series is like skinny and like sexy for a mom, you know? Yeah. And they don't look like real human like mothers. Not that people, those actresses aren't mothers and stuff, but they, they sort of portray them in this wholesome idealistic, life. Very idealistic, Like they come yeah. through the door and they're glowing. And when... With the joy, she looks like somebody's mom. But yeah, like she reminds me of yeah. one of my friends' mom. Like she looks like a mom. Like she has a style and she wears things and she wears her hair and her makeup, like how she did when she was younger versus what's today's standards. Like she's not. Like it always seems like mothers are so in tune with like today's fashion and makeup. Yeah. yeah. And it's like no, she's wearing things that she. She would looks wear. like she came out Twin Peaks. That's what she looks like. She reminds me of. Um, that one a lady, the one waitress from Twin Peaks. That's who she. I wonder if she was inspired. And I by love her. the houses. 
Uh, yeah, I do. I love how obsessed with the level design of the house. The houses, yeah. they just look like real houses. Yeah, it looks like a. Re- That's my, the way yeah. you should make a house, and like Andy Level, they look like people live in them. Yeah, it just reminds me when I did sleepovers when I was like in, in middle school. Oh my god, the house it looks like, so Jenny's much like house a house is just I, like that. I know that the way that they put the posters, everything looks like it has purpose. Like there's a store behind everything, and yeah, you know, she even mentioned this like this uh, cigarette thing she made for her mom that she would put her keys in. Like, that's a cool detail. Yeah, I like the house. It, it really did remind me of, like, sleeping over at my friend's house. I'm it like, looks yeah. like every house that I've been in growing up. Yeah. Not our house, because it was stupidly, like, polished all the time. It was like Ginny's house to me. It looked like Ginny's I house. I mean, it's not the same makeup or anything. Or, or, or James's house. Or I'm just one of the two. Yeah, it just, yeah. Just, like, suburban, like, yeah. But not Good too house. uptight of cleaning like our parents. We have a very, very pristine house. It's like very like no dust kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have anything any last any last? I don't think so. I don't remember enough of it. To, I need to rewatch it, like on YouTube, to like really because I didn't know what was going on half the time, so I kinda like checked out. Because, like, they would be angry about things that I don't know what they're angry about. Yeah. And it was either stupid, like, the bar scene, and so I kind of checked out. I, I just thought the whole thing in the bar was dumb. I did. Oh, no, it was a concert. It wasn't a bar. But Whatever it was. It was a concert bar thing. I think it was a concert at a bar. A club. It was a club. It was, it like, was a, a farm club, club thing and, and outside. I don't even know. Dude, like, a is farm. Is that still a thing? Like... Where did she I, go? I don't know. It wasn't relatable at all. I knew I knew people that were like Chloe, and they did not do things like. Well, they didn't really do stuff like that. It was not. They didn't relatable. go about it that way. It was clear that the people who wrote it didn't actually do that. Yeah, it was very obvious that they were not a part of that scene. Usually, like people that I knew that were part of that yeah. scene, they found a way in because they knew somebody there. It wasn't it, like they. Snuck you don't in with really go up to a bouncer. Like, I don't know. And like then that, threaten him and then think that's going to get you somewhere. Like, like and, then, and typically how that stuff goes is that it's so busy and everyone's so wasted that you can just walk in. Yeah, walk in somewhere or something. You could you just know? walk in. Like, they're so fucking wasted. I mean, for a gameplay mechanic, they had to, like, have that. But honestly, it would have just been, like, some guy would have been like, Yo, man, Glo, do you want to, like, even know do you want to, like, go in. to the fucking concert? She's like, I don't know if I'm allowed in. I don't fucking care. Just take a beer and just walk in, and that's exactly how it would have gone. And then she would just walk. Or just in. like they snuck into the back, or yeah, or they just walk. In. Like... You just act like you're meant to be there, and then you're in. I know, and I know that they were supposed to be like, oh well, she's actually like kind of a prude, and so you know whatever. But like it just wasn't a convincing scene at all. It was like a Walking Dead scene, you know, and that's Walking Dead, so I forgive it. This is supposed to be like a light, like little slice of life, like convincing moment. It just didn't seem that way to me. Like, he was so chill, he was just like, yeah, <laughs> you're funny, you can go in. Yeah, and then he gets fired because he actually, like, confronted her and let her in. So it's like... Well, yeah, it, it, it kind of met at, like, the halfway point. It's like, if you want him to be enough of a prick... To not let her to in. To not let her in. And he's going to be a prick that doesn't let her in. Versus being you like, can't, oh my god, you pointed out the flowers on my motorcycle. And, and it, I'm so fragile. Oh, like, I guess you're care. in now. And it's like, this is, uh, he should just been a prick the entire way. I mean, if you're going to go in, go all in. And not uh, and um, him being in a, just being uptight. She has to, he has the right to be uptight because she's, what, 16? So it, it makes sense. But with that kind of thing, people just don't care in real life. Unless they probably do it. It depends on the balance. It depends on the area, and it would just yeah. be done differently. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been. Done I mean, there's some people who do genuinely care and would be like, "Absolutely not, get out of here." And but and there's nothing you can say or do. They will yeah, the, there's out. nothing you can do to convince them. There's yeah. no back talking them. They don't care because you're fucking sixteen and they're like forty. There's nothing. If some kid were trying to backstop me and be like, "Get the fuck out of here, you little bitch," <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you're so fucking yeah. annoying. They probably would have said that too. They'd be like, get away, little twat. And that's all they would have said. No, you're not that's allowed it. in. I'm not going to even engage with you. Get out of here or, or, like, whatever, you know? Yeah. Then you had to sneak in. All right. I I think I said my theory. I just think that um, that Braven represents the dad. Something's going to happen to the dad. Okay. Something new. I have to watch it. I'll get back to you on that theory. 
Because um, I don't remember much about the dad. I just know it was some vaguely poorly rigged something's rigged gonna happen to figure him. of a man. Expe uh, that's what I'm thinking, especially since he's not in the second game and... Well, but why would he be? Chloe's dad died of a train wreck, so something's probably gonna happen to the dad. Something. I mean, obviously he was introduced, but I don't know why he would be in the second game. Well, there's not even like a mention, like even like a vague mention, it, like because they kind of at the end of um, Life is Strange Two made it seem like he was really important to the school because he was talking to the principal, the dad. Yeah, the dad. But yeah. if he was dead, then how is he talking to the principal? No, no, he's not dead. Not in, okay. And before the storm, at the end of before the storm, chapter one, he was talking to the principal, like he was important to the school, and he wasn't even mentioned in in Life is Strange. Like, you would think he would be mentioned somewhere. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, if he was important okay. to the school. Um, like a vague mention. Uh, I mean, they probably just made up the character from Before the Storm, and that's why he didn't show up in Life is Strange, but whatever. Alright, I, I think we're going to end it here. It disgusts me that you stole that dead road from that car. I know. I mean, yeah, that's it for me. So we'll see you guys later. I give it a thumbs up for excited for see chapter. You guys two. later. See you guys <laughs> later. Hello guys. If you like this video, please consider checking out my game Vacant. It's free right now off of itch.io and early access. I would really love to hear you guys' feedback and comments and all that jazz. The link will be in the description if you want to see more.